Sayyidi Rais. Mr. President, allow me at the outset to congratulate you, Mr. Dennis Francis, for your election to preside over the 78th session of the General Assembly at the United Nations. I wish you success in your endeavor. I would also like to commend the special efforts of His Excellency Mr. Chaba Korosi, your predecessor who presided over the previous session. Allow me to seize this opportunity to reaffirm our support to the initiatives by His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, to empower our organization so that it can address the urgent global challenges included in our common agenda. We look forward to participating and contributing in the Summit of the Future in 2024. Mr. President, allow me to express the deep thanks and appreciation of the Kingdom of Morocco to their Majesties, Highnesses and Excellences, Kings, Princes, Heads of State and Government and Ministers that expressed their solidarity and support to Morocco following the earthquake. I would like to thank them for their readiness to stand with my country to fight the repercussions of this natural disaster. The Kingdom of Morocco has faced the repercussions of this earthquake, which led to the death of 3,000 people and injured 5,700 others. It also led to grave material losses. We face those repercussions with determination, seriousness, and solidarity, and these are the values of Morocco. Since the beginning of the earthquake, His Majesty, King Mohammed VI, God bless him, gave his noble instructions to mobilize all state institutions, including the Royal Armed Forces, the government institutions, local authorities, public forces, and civil prevention teams to take all the necessary urgent actions to accelerate the rescue and relief of the injured and to provide assistance to families affected. We immediately established an interministerial committee to develop an urgent program for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of affected areas. The Kingdom of Morocco was under the effective leadership and the direct supervision of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him. And we passed from rescue and relief, urgent rescue and relief, to reconstruction and rehabilitation of affected areas. His Majesty gave his noble instructions to adopt a well-studied and ambitious program to provide strong, consistent and quick response to all the repercussions of this natural disaster. We allocated about $12 billion for this program from our budget for the next five years. The first phase of the project covers all affected areas and provides services to 4.2 million people. This program was adopted following the identification and detailed assessment of needs. It includes programs for the reconstruction of homes and the rehabilitation of affected infrastructure. It also promotes socioeconomic development in the affected areas. This will be funded, this multilateral program will be funded from the state's budget from the contributions of the committee and the special solidarity account established to address the repercussions of the uh, earthquake as well as from international support and solidarity. His Majesty the King stressed the need for the re rehabilitation and reconstruction to be consistent with the architectural specificities and the traditions of the areas. It must respect the dignity of its people and their norms and traditions. In line with these measures, all the components of the Moroccan community inside the country and abroad took part in national efforts to provide assistance to those in need. This proved the strong national solidarity in our uh, society in these difficult circumstances. Mr. President, 
The earthquake in Morocco, as well as the tornado and floods in sisterly Libya, as well as climate change, continue to represent the biggest challenge to humanity in the globe. This is why today, more than ever, there's a need to promote prevention, resilience, international cooperation as part of the international community's priorities. This session is being held in a very critical global context that is facing different geopolitical tensions, climate change, poverty eradication, migration, terrorism, hate speech, pandemics, and natural disasters. However, the pace of current technological and scientific progress might be a source of hope, provided that current challenges lead to international solidarity and cooperation to promote scientific research, including artificial intelligence, and to encourage the equal sharing of their benefits in strategic priorities, such as health security, energy transformation, food and water security, modern technologies, and fighting natural disasters. The current circumstances require national policies in line with or consistent with our international commitments by focusing on the promotion of uh, resilient societies through a comprehensive approach based on equity and social justice to achieve sustainable development. This also requires us to promote a multilateral system based on solidarity and cooperation with the UN at its center. This approach was adopted by the Kingdom of Morocco in line with the noble instructions of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, to launch structural workshops, especially the new development model, to promote sustainable development, energy transformation, social coverage and fight natural disasters as part of a comprehensive vision that is in line with the sustainable development goals. His Majesty King Mohammed VI attaches great importance to the empowerment of women and the family in general. This is why today he sent a noble message to His Excellency the Prime Minister to review the personal status code through consultations with the participation of all stakeholders to submit amendment proposals for this code within six months. Mr. President, the Kingdom of Morocco expresses deep concern regarding the spread of hate speech, especially through social media. This sows the seeds of division within societies, cultures, and states, and exacerbates violent terror uh, extremism. It is rather the main factor of global instability. This is something stressed by His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, in his noble message to the participants in the ninth session of the Global Forum for the Alliance of Civilizations held in FAS on the 22nd and 23rd of November 2022, he said, and I quote, Our civilization has never confronted such risks. Coexistent has never faced such tremendous daily challenges. Rarely did we fear and suspect others. Like, like today, and rarely was every trigger event used to instigate fear and hatred like today. End of quote. We reaffirm Morocco's re full rejection and condemnation of every assault on 
religious symbols and sacred books. We strongly denounce the desecration and burning of the Holy Quran. This insults more than 2 billion Muslims around the globe. This is a violation of the basic rules of human rights. The relevant countries should take all the necessary measures to stop such violations. In line with this position, the Kingdom of Morocco tabled in July this year a resolution on fighting hate speech adopted by consensus by member states at the United Nations General Assembly to condemn the desecration of sacred books. For the first time, it classified such acts as a violation of international law. The resolution also called upon the Secretary General of the United Nations to organize the first conference on hate speech in 2025. We recognize the important role of sports in bringing states together and spreading a culture of peace and tolerance. This is why the Kingdom of Morocco submitted a candidacy jointly with Spain and Portugal to host the 2030 World Cup Finals. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, stressed the importance of this candidacy by saying how unprecedented it is. It brings together two continents and two civilizations, Africa and Europe. It unifies the two banks of the Mediterranean and promotes the aspirations and ambitions of the people of the region for further cooperation, understanding, and communication. Mr. President, we remain attached to a final political solution for the fabricated regional conflict in the Moroccan Sahara to promote development, stability, and peace in the region and the African continent. Morocco continues to support the efforts of His Excellency, the S Secretary General of the United Nations and his special envoy to relaunch roundtables with the same format and the same participants, especially Algeria, the main party to this conflict, in line with Security Council Resolution 2654. We reaffirm once again that the final solution can only be political, realistic, and practical based on consensus. The Initiative for Autonomy, as part of the Kingdom of Morocco's territorial integrity and national sovereignty, remains the only solution to this fabricated regional conflict. There is no alternative for this solution. On this basis, more than 100 countries today from all over the world support the Moroccan Autonomy Initiative. More than or around 30 states and regional organizations opened consulates in Al Ayoun and Al Dakhla, stressing their full support to the Moroccanness of the Sahara. As part of our new development model for the southern regions, we allocated until today 10 billion US dollars and we implemented about 81% of this project to promote the socio-economic development of this region. This made it a regional hub for trade between Africa and the rest of the world. The special representative of, or the special envoy of the Secretary General, Mr. Stefan Di Mistura, saw firsthand these achievements during his visit of the two cities of Al Ayoun and Al Dakhla in the Moroccan Sahara in the beginning of this month. These great efforts are part of the noble instructions of His Majesty the King included in his speech to, commemor to commemorate the 47th anniversary of the Green March on November 6, 2022. He said, and I quote, Our defense of the Moroccanness of the Sahara is based on a comprehensive approach 
that includes diplomatic and political work, the promotion of social, economic, and humanitarian development. The Kingdom of Morocco expresses deep concern regarding the catastrophic humanitarian situation in the Tindof camps in Algeria. Algeria, the host country, delegated its authority illegally to a separatist armed group with confirmed close links to criminal and terrorist networks. This perversion requires the attention of the international community because Algeria refuses to register and count the people detained in the Tindouf camps. This is a blatant and clear violation of international law and the repeated calls by the Security Council since 2011. The non-registration of people detained in the Tindouf camps allowed for the looting of humanitarian assistance sent to them. This was confirmed in reports by international, regional, and non-governmental organizations, latest of which a report of, by WFP in January 23. Mr. President, we stand in full solidarity with the sisterly, uh, with sisterly Libya following the unprecedented floods that led to grave losses in lives and properties. We express our full genuine condolences to the people and state of Libya as well as to the families of victims. We wish the injured a speedy recovery. In line with the noble instructions of His Majesty the King, God bless him, we will always stand with the legitimate Libyan institutions and we support international efforts to solve this crisis in this country in line with the agreements reached by different Libyan parties, especially the UN efforts to reach a permanent political solution to the Libyan crisis in line with the Sukhairat Agreement of 2015. In this vein, Morocco hosted a series of meetings that led to an agreement between the Speaker of the House and the Chairman of the Libyan High State Council in October 2022 to implement the outcomes of the Bozomnika uh, meeting to unify the executive. In Bozomnika, from May 23rd to June 6, 2023, a meeting was held for the joint committee, the 6 plus 6, which includes the House of Representatives and the Libyan High State Council, to prepare for the electoral laws. It led to major agreements on the organization of elections in Libya. Mr. President, the Palestinian question is a national priority and it is a cornerstone in our foreign policy. We call for avoiding any escalation and violence so as to prevent from the situation from getting out of control. We call for sparing the Middle East further tensions which derails the peace process. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, as president and chairman of the Al-Quds Committee in the OIC, expressed the importance attached by the Kingdom of Morocco to the Palestinian question by saying, I quote, with the same seriousness and determination, we stress Morocco's position to ensure a just solution to the Palestinian question and the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as a capital to protect the stability and security of all the peoples of the region. End of quote. We reject all unilateral measures that jeopardize the historic and legal status of Al-Quds Al-Sharif. We support the Palestinian Authority led by His uh, Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas and its decisions to protect the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to achieve their uh, ambition 
to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as a capital on the lines of 4 June 1967 in line with the internationally agreed upon two-state solution and in respect of the principle of international legitimacy and relevant resolutions. Mr. President, in conclusion, it is our responsibility as member states to provide the necessary conditions to ensure the success of our organization by providing it with the necessary resources and political will to ensure its reform so that we can build a more just and human multilateral global order based on solidarity. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, has already stressed this in his noble speech before the 59th session of the General Assembly, where he called for the following, and I quote, promoting trust in the United Nations as our humanity's living conscience, as the cornerstone of a new global order based on comprehensive peace and security, collective development, equality, tolerance, democracy, and fraternity, end of quote. May the peace, mercy, and best blessings of God be upon you. I thank the, I thank the chair of the delegation of Morocco. I would have liked to, I would to not have to have taken the floor at this late stage of the debate. You have already closed the general debate of our assembly, General Assembly. But allow me, first of all, to reiterate my condolences and the condolences of the entire people of Algeria and our solidarity too with the brotherly people of Morocco at this trying and painful period following the devastating earthquake that affected it at the beginning of the month. Allow me also to once again reiterate our readiness to provide humanitarian assistance without condition to those affected by this natural disaster. President, I'm forced to take the floor because a distinguished permanent representative of Morocco attempted to deform the position expressed by President Tiboun in his address to this assembly on last Tuesday. It's true. And we claim the same that the President, President Tiboun has once again called for the unwavering support of Algeria for those still living under foreign domination. But we will never but our support for liberation of the peoples still under domi colonial domination is based on our history and on our fight for national liberation. Everyone has their side. We, in Algeria, we have chosen the camp of just, the side of justice, that of decolonization, that of freedom, that of self-determination and human rights. This commitment of course, applies to the cause of the Sahrawi people, who now for almost half a century have been waiting for the UN to ensure justice is served, for the UN to finally 
um, apply the 1514 Declaration on the Independence of Colonial Peoples. Do we need to even recall, President, that in 1975 this territory in Western Sahara was first, was then shared, it was shared between the Kingdom of Morocco and Mauritania. Three years later, it was completely occupied by the Kingdom of Morocco. The United Nations indeed tried to ensure international law is respected, creating MINURSO, and that was the UN mission for the organization of a referendum in Western Sahara. This mission remains on the territory of Western Sahara, bearing witness to the, wi the, the will of the international community to put an end to the occupation and to organize a free and transparent consultation of the Sahrawi people vis-à-vis -vis their future. But Minurso is regularly and st still has still been prevented from organizing this referendum on self-determination. Vague autonomy proposals are being put forward, which so far have convinced nobody. While in Western Sahara, the Moroccan occupation, if it really was a paradise there, with or without autonomy, why then, why would this referendum be prevented from happening? Why is the will of the sorry people not being heard? President, firstly, the nature of the question of Western Sahara. It is a question of decolonization. You just need to look at the agenda of the Security Council, of the General Assembly, of the C24. just need to look at that to really understand the nature of this issue of Western Sahara, which is and remains a question of decolonization, which must be resolved through self, the self-determination of the Sahrawi people. Secondly, we've referred to Algeria incorrectly, because Algeria is not a party to this conflict. The two parties to this conflict are the Kingdom of Morocco and the Polisario Front. And that's how they negotiated the ceasefire. That's how they negotiated the beginning of the organization of a referendum, as is proven by Security Council resolutions and resolutions from the General Assembly. And to resolve this conflict then, the international community, and that's been proven by documents, been circulated at the United Nations, the UN calls to determine the wishes of the Sahrawi, a choice between two proposals, the referendum or autonomy. And let's leave the Sahrawis space to decide in a transparent fashion in referendums organized by the United Nations. President, it is a secret to no one that Algeria has supported and, has, and continues to support the right to self-determination for the people in Western Sahara. That is what President Taboon stated clearly and with conviction before this 
assembly on Tuesday. There is no need to repeat it. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, sir. I apologize for taking the floor again. But given that my Algerian colleague likes to engage in controversy and, and respond every time I take the floor, I will try to be as brief as he was. My Algerian brother reproached us with two issues. The first reproach, not talking about the Sahara. Let me give him an appointment at the round table. It's not just there that we discuss it. And Algeria is divided to the round table. And unfortunately, they continue to reject the invitation to participate and the resolution and the Security Council's resolution on the matter. So if he's so interested in talking about the situation, Nisara, then as we've done in the past, in the f first two round tables, then we could continue. Second reproach was that I only spoke about Algeria. That's true, dear brother, for a simple reason, because Algeria is the mother of all the ill fortune in our region. Now I have two observations. Algeria rejects the resolutions of the Security Council. And there I have to ask the question as follows. What will Algeria do with the Security Council when its own resolutions are rejected. There is no place at the Security Council for countries that reject or are in violation of and do not uphold Security Council resolutions. We are awaiting the attitude of the Alger delegation when they accede to the Security Council. We'd like to see what happens. Second observation, there seems to be ignorance, unfortunately, of the text of the United Nations and the resolutions and the decisions handed down. The Security Council does not address the issue of the Sahara as a decolonization problem, but one of peace and security, rather. And it's in that context and in that mindset that on a number of occasions where Algeria was a member of the Security and voted on resolutions on the Moroccan Sahara. So we can't ignore them. Third observation, well, Algeria is quite fortunate due to the principle of rotation. Because if there were not a principle of rotation in place, Algeria would never have acceded to the Security Council. And it's Africa, North Africa's turn and this is a principle which is egalitarian in nature, and we are in favor of this principle. But it's not because Algeria did anything for the United Nations. They haven't even sent a single soldier to peacekeeping forces. And the proof is that it shelters an armed group, a separatist group. And there, coming back to the armed group then, I regret that Algeria is comparing itself to a terrorist group. We have a great deal of esteem for our brothers, for the Shuada, whose blood is mingled with the blood of Moroccans and soldiers' blood shed. And Al-Qaeda terrorists and Daesh have been compared to them. And the proof is that the Sauri people came to the Timduf camps to be healed when they were wounded by French forces. Three times they sought refuge in the Tinduf camps. And another information that's helpful is Daesh is not, normally doesn't mourn losses of one of their eminent members or leaders. They did so for Wadwit Sawi, who was from the Tinduf, trained and educated by Algeria, financed by Algeria, and responsible for the Polisario, an official of the Polisario. So that's what I had to say, Mr. President, and I'll go back to what I said at the beginning, which is the Sarawak issue is discussed within the roundtables, and we would be most pleased to hear our Algerian brothers, what they have to say, even if we disagree, but it would be good to sit around the table and talk about peace and not talk 
in a way that attacks each other and that there be mutual respect, as was the case during the last two roundtables that were held. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. Rest assured, I'll be very much more brief than my colleague from the Kingdom of Morocco. He spoke for such a long time because he essentially just spoke about Algeria. I would have liked for him to speak about the question of Western Sahara, a territory that is occupied and has been occupied for more than 50 years now. Algeria, President, it is in part of its duty and its honour. It is an honour and we have always supported the fight for freedom of numerous peoples, African, African people under colonial domination. And many of these countries are here in the room. And Resolution 1514 is still relevant for the people of Western Sahara who are the last colony in Africa. To prove this, all you need to do is look at the agenda of this August General Assembly and the Fourth Committee. But I wanted to respond to two points specifically. In terms of the partition of Western Sahara, I would invite you to take a look at the Agreement on Delimination of Borders signed between the Kingdom of Morocco and the Islamic Republic of Mauritania. This agreement signed on the 11th of April 1976 is recorded and it is registered at the UN Secretariat, and has been, which was on the 9th of February 1977. Well, this agreement, which sets out the new borders of Morocco and Mauritania, simply shares the territory of Western Sahara between these two states. I won't go into further detail on this statement that could be verified by anyone at the UN Library. President, on next steps. And the allegations that accusations of terrorism concerning Polisario, who unfortunately are not in the room to defend themselves. As you know, liberation movements throughout history have always been accused of terrorism. The National Liberation Front of Algeria was for a long time treated as terrorists. But that doesn't dupe anyone because all he hegemonies have always tried to vilify resistance and those who fight for freedom 
and it does not convince the UN Secretary General, who has just also received, hosted the Secretary General of the Polisario Front, Mr. Ibrahim Rali, about 10 days ago. To conclude, President, I wish to reaffirm. Wrap up, because you have gone past the time. Thank you. Je voudrais. I want to reaffirm the support of Algeria to the Secretary General and his personal envoy in the effort in the efforts being undertaken to address this question of decolonization and find a solution through a referendum. I, this means consulting with the people in Western Sahara on their future. Thank you very much.